Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. I wanted to do a quick overview of some of the major information that was talked about from BritizenCon via the panels on the stream, from dev interviews, as well as uh, talking to some of the devs and other people at the pub at the Bar Citizen afterwards. I'd also like to thank Ichiru for lending me his notes and giving my uh, stuff a quick sanity check um, as I was uh, drinking at the event <laughs> and I had to make sure all of my notes were legit. Um, object container streaming is the biggest challenge and the most important thing to be coming to the game this year. Erin feels pretty good with being able to hit their schedule dates and the content in each of the patches that they've currently got on the roadmap. 3.3, however, will be the hardest for them as it's got that object container streaming in and they need to get it into everyone's hands and out into the wild. Object container streaming is the last biggest technical hurdle for them. After that, everything is downhill and much easier for them. I did ask Erin in the Bar Citizen afterwards what about server meshing then? He was extremely confident about their ability to do it, and he said that if there are any other methods that they could use for it for some reason, that server meshing didn't work or they found a better option, then they'd be able to do that as well. He has total confidence in their engineers and their team, but without object container streaming at the moment, there's not much else they can actually put into the universe until that comes online due to reaching the limits of what uh, minimum spec clients can do with memory and, and stuff like that. It's really important for them um, to be able to get that object container streaming in there to have planets, to have capital ships, to have the large scale combat. The Foundry 42 UK team is spearheading the mining stuff. There are two types of mining laser, um, one that will basically bore in and destroy or do controlled explosions of larger rocks, break down smaller ones, that sort of stuff, and an extraction laser that will be used to collect materials and the ores that, are, that kind of are mined out of them. Not every rock or asteroid will be mineable. They are working on the visual target for the whole mining system at the moment. 3.2, which is coming in June, will only have mining on planetary bodies. Asteroid mining in space will be in the future iterations. The only mining laser available in 3.2 will be the Prospector's Boom Arm. Rocks may have different densities and concentrations of ore. Rocks and trees, uh, pretty much anything actually can have item ports, it was revealed. Um, and obviously these item ports might be used for where ores are and things like that, potentially. Mineables might have different distributions based on their biome. They might be more common in certain areas. The artists can distribute them through lots of metrics and we will probably see uh, more common ones in certain areas. When mining, you will have a specific UI and readouts of what you're mining as well. Mining beams and lasers uh, that, that are specifically for mining can and will damage ships, vehicles, and people, though it might not necessarily be as effective as a weapon. Uh, beam weapons will be a thing in game two. VFX and all of the mining that we've seen in game was heavily work in progress in the ATV that we saw recently, but mining will be interactive and you'll be able to better um, learn how to mine and get better results from uh, various rocks and asteroids based on uh, you following these audio and visual cues, knowing uh, that certain rocks react in a particular way, is going to make you more efficient. The only ship you can mine with is the in 3.2 is the Prospector. Potentially in the future, other ships that are not specifically miners may be able to attach equipment to help them mine, or mining lasers and things like that. Though, they might not necessarily be as good as mining ships at doing it, um, or they may even lack abilities entirely to be able to collect mined materials by themselves. So they are more of assisting, it's more of a, an attachment and augment that you're putting on a ship that its role potentially isn't to do with mining normally, but they can then assist with mining. Your choices in Squadron 42 Episode 1 will carry over to Episode 2, Episode 3, and the Persistent Universe. Episodes 2 and 3 are both in pre-production. Designers are currently focused on Episodes 1's production, though. There is still a lot of tools and AI work to be done for Episode 1. It does have similar steps to the Persistent Universe's roadmap that we can see, but to a lesser degree. The AI for Squadron 42 doesn't need to work for multiplayer and can be a lot more scripted if necessary. It's a lot less intense. Intensive. Voice over IP and face over IP wise, you're going to be able to communicate via um, specific channels, select your own, and be able to talk to specific people in cockpits or via Mobi Glass. You're going to be able to see other people's avatars, and this is going to be still working even if they don't have um, face over IP, even if they don't have a webcam. You're still going to be able to see their avatar in game uh, and that sort of stuff, um, but you might not necessarily be able to see the 
face over IP full interaction that they would be able to have if they had a webcam all set up for face over IP. They confirmed they are still 100% going to be supporting VR at some point. However, it's not currently a priority. They have no concerns as they believe that their engineers will be able to pull it off to the highest possible level, but they will be actually looking at implementing VR after they've whittled down some of the more major systems, gameplay content and priorities. They will make changes to ships and systems if necessary, doing light modeling work and materials updates are not entirely uncommon. The plans for 3.2, if they have time, um, will be to be able to melt our Voyager Direct purchases and for UEC on our accounts to be the starting level of Alpha UEC we have every patch wipe. Weapons and items will potentially and should be available in 3.2 to buy with Alpha UEC. I did ask Erin to clarify in the Barcelona and afterwards, would this mean ships are going to be purchasable in 3.2 with Alpha UEC as well? And he said they are working towards that and they would try for 3.2. Unfortunately, it's a firm maybe. Command and Control will give you the ability to easily order other group members, ships and uh, the area around it, see an overview of what's going on. It will take air area data and other data, HUD data, metrics, all that sort of jazz from other ships in your group. You will then be able to set targets and waypoints for your fleet and see what they can see to a certain level. But they need to get a lot more core mechanics in there before doing uh, command and control stuff. Lots of multi-crew and permission-based stuff is going to be coming online soon. Door locking, permissions to use consoles, MFD stuff. They are very much working on that multi-crew and group experience. In 3.2, we should be able to share waypoints with your teammates, um, groups, and also via service beacons. You're going to obviously put those uh, service beacon mission waypoints. The ship pipeline is extremely developed now, and they can much more easily create ships. Employment-wise at CIG and the Foundry 42 offices, they always look for talent and skill over qualifications. There are garbage, trash, and scrap-type biomes coming with Hurston in 3.3 in September. In fact, we should be seeing a lot more biome diversity with 3.3 and with Hurston, its moons, and its landing zones. Citizens Con's date will be um, given out very soon. I believe it's going to be in Austin this year, and the venue will be much larger. Expect early to mid-October to be the date. Um, it looks this year to be between the 5th and 13th of October, I would expect, uh, going historically. They are getting the tech ready for team play, multi-crew and group play, and taking that to the next level. Though they are currently not working on internal damage for 3.2 when it comes to ships and vehicles, damaging items with small arms fire or FPS combat is intended to be a thing in the future. They will be giving us more information on modules. They are working on the current priorities though, but they are going to be focusing on that gameplay at some point in the not too distant future. Exploration gameplay will have a lot of different things under its gameplay canopy. So potentially you'll be able to make unique discoveries of planets or systems and jump points. But there's also a huge amount more when it comes to exploring planets, moons and space that's already been visited. There's going to be lots of things to track down, lots of things to research and find, um, even in that uh, space that is more widely visited. We will see more ground vehicles in the future. It was implied that there may be entirely civilian ones that we may be able to get our hands on, but we were in the pub when we were discussing that. Some other bits and pieces throughout the day. JR Fabrication makes official Star Citizen branded props. Uh, you can buy them straight from his website. Uh, he does custom orders as well. I will link them down below. Special effect are amazing. They were also at the event. They help disabled children get accessibility to games and computers via bespoke peripherals made for their needs. They are absolutely fantastic. Um, again, I'll put links down to them uh, below. HTS voice packs I have a unified voice pack now that allows you to use the different voice actors from the other packs um, to be allocated to different systems and positions. They are going to constantly be supporting Star Citizen and updating too. Probably a bit more if Star Citizen stopped moving their key bindings around. Um, it was a fantastic event. I don't envy having to organise it at all. Um, Chris and other people that were the, uh, the chief... Uh, creators of that event um, that have done an amazing job. Great job from everyone there, to be honest. I might have to do another part for this video if there's a lot um, more info that comes out of it. There is a lot more stuff I need to rewatch, including rewatching the full panels when they go up in high quality. Um, 
comparing to other people's notes, talking to some of the other attendees. There was lots of other stuff that I would have not been possibly be able to be present for at all. And if there's more information that I have missed, I will put up another video or attach it to another one. Where possible below, I'll link to all the original VODs and videos too. Every month we have a giveaway for Star Citizen. For this April, it's a massive salvage ship, the Aegis Reclaimer, provided by our featured app, MyRadar. MyRadar is a free weather app that also includes full-scale maps of the three moons of Crusader, including Yella, Selen, and Daemar. Users can scroll around the interactive maps and zoom in to the landscape to see the geography of those moons. My radar is available in the US, Europe, Japan, South Korea, and coming this summer to Australia. It is a real life weather app as well, so you can see the weather in your general area and in those countries too. It's available on iOS, Android, and Windows. Please check it out in the links below if you are interested. But to be in for a chance of that reclaimer, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos throughout April. Each video gives you another chance to win. Do you have any questions about Star Citizen, its development, gameplay mechanics, suggestions for videos, whatever, chuck them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. A special thank you to my Patreons for allowing me to create the amount of content I do. Ugh! If you're interested in becoming one of them, please find the links to Patreon as well as everything else we discussed down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I'll see you in the verse.